Welcome to AP Environmental Science. In this video, we are briefly going to describe how Earth's geography can impact the climate in just a few examples of this. Now, for starters, you need to know the difference between weather and climate. Now, weather is this short-term atmospheric conditions in a particular area, whereas climate is this general long-term pattern that's measured over periods of decades to thousands of years. So climate is kind of what you would expect to happen in December and January. You would expect it to be colder and you would expect it to be warmer in July and August. Whereas weather is that day-to-day -day conditions where you might have a 35 degrees and snowy one day in January and the next day the weather might be clear and sunny and 40 degrees. So weather is your day-to-day -day, whereas climate is the long-term pattern that you would expect. Another way to think about the difference is that weather is the outfit that you wear on one single day, whereas your entire closet would be your climate. Now there are several factors that affect daily weather and the overall climactic patterns, and these are primarily driven by the amount of the sun's energy due to the angle of sunlight and the concentration of that sunlight and those seasonal cycles, and also by geologic and geographic factors such as mountains and distance to the ocean. Additionally, I included some other factors that affect weather and climate in this diagram, and I particularly want to point out that human activities have influenced daily weather patterns, and we are beginning to notice the trends where they are impacting the overall global climactic patterns. And that's pretty troubling because a lot of our society and a lot of the environment is really dependent upon knowing these seasonal cycles and these overall climactic patterns. Now I want to get into one of these ways that the geography of the Earth really impacts climate, and that is called a rain shadow. Now a rain shadow occurs when you have a mountain range near an ocean and you have this warm humid air blowing in off the ocean and it runs right into that mountain range. Now as the air comes in and hits the mountain, it's forced to go up and over the mountain. And as that air is forced upward, it becomes less dense due to adiabatic cooling and it releases its precipitation on that windward side of the mountain. Now as the air comes over the top and starts to drop on the far side of the mountain, it goes through that process of adiabatic heating. Now we use these same terms when we described Hadley cells. So in a Hadley cell, as the air rises at the equator, it goes through that adiabatic cooling and releases the moisture near the equator. The exact same thing is happening here at a rain shadow. Now we can find these rain shadows particularly, you can see them on the western part of the United States, and this is what causes there to be lush vegetation on the California side of the mountains and the deserts in Nevada. Thermohaline circulation also is another way to describe the distribution of the heat throughout the Earth. You can see on this map that the shallow warm currents tend to bring that heat from the equator towards the North Pole and the South Pole. This is what helps to regulate those temperatures in Northern Europe and Southern South America and Southern Africa. So what happens in this thermohaline circulation is this warm water flows up towards Iceland and Greenland. And what happens here is it starts to cool, it becomes more dense, and it sinks down to the bottom of the ocean. And this thermohaline pump is really what drives this entire current. Now also, the distance of a location from the ocean also determines how balanced that temperature is. So when you have a location that is further away from the coastline, you're going to experience greater swings in the temperature. So in summary, you need to know and be able to describe how the Earth's geography affects weather and climate patterns. Make sure you know the difference between those two terms and some factors that affect those climate patterns. 
You also need to be able to describe a rain shadow, how it forms, and some of the characteristics, along with how this distribution of heat from the ocean impacts the temperature of inland locations. Please let me know what your questions are, and I hope that as you watch this video, you were able to learn something.